بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا Today what we spoke about at the time of Jumu'ah My intention was to continue on that point But because there are some Who were not here at Jumu'ah time So we will just like rewind a little We will mention the example again And from there then we will continue to what I wanted to try to explain the, During the Jumu'ah but there was not enough time The example was given and the giving of examples was the tariq perhaps that Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi Rahimullah started for the ummah. That he would give such examples which would explain to a person that how your relationship with your Allah must be. And after the entire example it's known that there can be no example really for Allah. That Allah is completely unique. But an example is given that I, you, we can understand to something. That what we're supposed to be reaching for, why we are, where we're making mistakes, how to come out from the mistake, our relationship with our Allah, how it should be. So the example that we gave was the example of the falcon. This is a unique bird for hunting. Recent time, I think it was in the, in one of the Arab countries, now there's a big shock for this hunting, especially with falcons. So the Arabs love this. It's a very expensive bird. Here in South Africa, the only thing they know is bicycles. How much they pay for the bicycle, they pay for a falcon. That falcon. So they have that falcon on their hand here. Sometimes on the right, sometimes on the left. The falcon is the thrill for the king. Falcon is the thrill. So recently when this COVID was carrying on, there was a lot of demand for this. Falcons. So what came in the news was that the whole plane was chartered only for falcons. So there was no passengers at all. And that one picture that was taken was each seat had one falcon. But he wasn't sitting on the seat, he was sitting like where we put our neck normally. And then he's tied to the seat. Sure, because it gave us an idea of when we travel in the aeroplane. That the falcon, then between every falcon there had to be one seat because COVID distancing. And the falcon's beak is such that if they left that beak, before they reached their destination, there would have been no seat left. So the falcon also had a mask. So when I saw that mask, I said that even the protocol he follows. He also had his mask. So they put a small cap here. So that ma- that beak is so, so, so strong that even the king is worried that if he just leaves that doesn't keep it closed. He might even bite his ear off. It's a unique bird. And when it flies, then it can go one kilometer up and it's just like relaxed, calm, moving around. But from that one kilometer, it's seeing what's happening on the ground as though it was right next to it. So to understand that speed of that falcon when it's moving in that sky... When its trainer takes one chicken in his hand, dead chicken, like how you take a tennis ball and you throw it up and you're ready to hit it with your racket. So when you throw the tennis ball, it doesn't take long for it to come in line. Very fast you have to hit. But this person just throws this chicken. Yes. And you looking at the falcon, he's still supposed to be somewhere one kilometer in the sky. You just put your head up and you see something going past your nose already. And you just look there and you see that chicken never reached the ground. He just threw it and from one kilometer he dives at the speed of 400 kilometers per hour. And he just go past your nose. Going past your nose and say if I wanted to bang you out I would have banged you also. So fast but it is so so straight 
that if there are five, six people in its way, it will make sure it will find the gap. What that speed? And it will pick up the chicken and it will go perch there and say nothing happened. That speed. So to see that thing happening makes the king thrilled. And when he gets a falcon which is trained, then he thrills him to see obedience. That that falcon which is far away in the mountain, then the king says to them, look. And he just does this. There's no whistle for the falcon. There's no flag for the falcon. The falcon is watching its master no matter where it is. So he just has to lift up his hand or he goes like this and the next second that falcon will leave everything and come back to its master. Even if in front of it is the most juiciest of rabbits. The training of the falcon which makes the hunt of the falcon halal, otherwise normally it's haram. If it catches an animal, that animal becomes haram. But if the falcon is trained and the training of the falcon is that for a period of time, the trainer has to make sure the falcon always responds. The falcon can eat even after he caught that rabbit. But as soon as the master calls, he must respond immediately. So he gets his training period. They say for three days the falcon must continuously respond. If for three days he can show his obedience... He becomes the falcon of the king. Now what he hunts becomes halal for the whole royal family. Everyone can eat it. He grabbed it. He broke that animal's neck. He butt into that animal. And don't think of a small rabbit. That falcon can pick up a buck. It can pick up a deer with one grab. Understand that speed. If you ever saw a cheetah, normally we'll see cheetahs if you go crook a buck. You people don't know what Kruger Park is. You always see Lamborghinis. and say, you saw that car. Like, how it went. The cheetah, when it runs, it runs at the speed of 120 k's per hour. So it was just sitting, looking at that buck. And there was no, like, how our car goes. For gear, 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 and gone. That cheetah is immediately on its feet. So that animal doesn't have a time to even turn and the cheetah was on it. 120 k's power. If you even dare looking at the hunt, you will see the cheetah there and the next minute when you see it, it already caught its animal. You will not see it going past. But the falcon comes at 400 kilometers power. 400 kilometers. Obedience, but for 30 days... Almighty Allah created for us a Ramadan to say, can you be obedient? And you will become my falcon. How the king will become thrilled with his bird, Allah says, I will become thrilled with you. And how the king will tell other people, come and see my hunt. Almighty Allah on the day of Eid announces to the angels, look at my servants. Allah says, Ibadi. He says, are you seeing my servants as they go out for the Eid? It's the king saying, look at my falcon. But what was the thrill of the falcon? It wasn't the form of the falcon. It wasn't really the beak of the falcon. It wasn't the wings. It wasn't the claws. It was the obedience. That although inside it, it got a lot of shahwat. It wants to eat when it wants to eat. It's a falcon. It's a hunting bird. It's a bird of prey. It can easily say to the king, I don't need you. When I go in that skies, the why must I land on your call? What are you going to give me? But when that falcon is trained, that king becomes everything for it. Although it knows that when it catches that animal, the king will only give it a little meat and he will throw it on the ground. And the falcon in love will eat that. And the king will just pet it like that and that will be the end for the falcon. The falcon knows it's going to get nothing from the king except one word of appreciation. The king needs the falcon, the falcon does not need the king. 
But in love, the falcon likes to be next to the king. He just likes it. My master. And then we explain, sometimes it might happen that this falcon starts thinking, what happens on the other side? Meaning away from the king. So he saw there was the parrot, the bhaji. And he saw somebody else as the king walked with his falcon, the other one walked with his bhaji. Small on his handless. And the bhaji also was pecking. So the falcon thought, wonder what he eats. He saw him sometimes smoking. He saw him sometimes popping a tablet. That small bhaji had its own food. But the falcon would sometimes think, I wonder what it will be if I put the tablet in my mouth. Because see, when the bhaji does it, he starts dancing around. So when the master feeds the bhaji, I go, beep, 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 beep. So thrill he is. So the falcon said, I wish I can do that. Take one tablet and also make me pee pee. That's what happens. They take that one drug, they go, chow, chow, chow. Round. And they fly like the parrot and they fall. Oof. The next day they wake up and say, wow. Like but they were not a falcon. They never went one kilometer in the sky. They only reached the roof. Oof. A drug doesn't take you far. And it doesn't take you fast. You just think you're going. Sometimes you take that drug and that man sees a train coming for him. So he starts running. <laughs> Tell that person, get off the track. <laughs> this way or that way. He runs on the track. <laughs> and he sees the train behind him coming. And he just, in his dream he's running. running, running. Just then get off the track. Finished. But because of the drug he can't. He'll run, 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 run. And in the dream the train bang him. And then he just wake up. Ah. So I was on one flight and the, I was returning from Durban, I think. And he was returning from Durban also. It was that weekend where they had one of these clubs like, like how you have end of the year party. So it happened we sat next to each other. So I asked him like, where are you coming from? So he said from that party. I don't know whatever that party, he got a name, like a 44 or something, where the matric students, they all go. So all of them, then they partied that whole night. So he took out his card to show me, like, this was, where I, this was my number. So he said, which club you went to? <laughs> so which club you went to? You know, not, not, I wasn't a Muslim also. Even if I was a Muslim, where you understand which club I went to? Because I'm coming back on the same flight. Durban week is finished. So I just said, no, I was also partying. <laughs> so I can't explain to him. So then I asked him, what you get out of it? So he said that, he explained how the whole thing works and the thrill and the different parts of the club and where you go and you enjoy it here, then you enjoy it there, then you got some other thrill here. And you don't sleep the whole night, so now he needs sleep, this person. Now he's on that flight and you can already see. So then he mentioned to me one, two things about Darwin's theory of evolution because he's studying it and how the whole theory fits into place, how everything works out, why they can't be a god, all of that he explained to me. And then... I told him, you're looking very, very tired. Why don't you rest? So he slept away. So as he was sleeping, he started having his nightmares next to me. In that one hour, about three times, he like, <gasps> three times. But he's so tired, he wakes up, he looks at me, and he's out again. So before landing, that was my last like meeting with him, I just told him that, I see you don't get very good sleep. So he says, it always happens to me. He says, I see myself on a cliff and I'm looking down. And whenever someone got a fear for heights, even if you don't fall, you're already screaming. See, I see myself on that cliff and while I'm looking and I'm shivering, 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 then someone just pushes. And I just see myself. That's why. Well, he doesn't even land at the bottom. He already wakes up when he's still there. So I told him, you always have this dream. But then I never have time to talk to him after that. But I said, how, what a lie this world is. That the day after he enjoyed the best of parties and drugs and drinks, forget Jahannam coming. Even in his sleep, the world can't give him peace. Even in his sleep. What a lie it is when they said, come all the way to Durban to enjoy they never said that enjoy while you awake and scream while you're sleeping. We sleep to relax. He can't relax. 
His body is dying for peace, sleep. He went looking there for peace. He never got it there. It made him like a wreck. Now he's looking for the sleep. It's making him a bigger wreck. Whenever he sees himself, he's coming down, crashing. Whenever he sees himself. So I mentioned that that sometimes you see that budgie or that parrot and you really think, I wonder what life is on that side. This is what life is. That the falcon, when he goes up, he's not scared. But when that parrot goes too high, he's scared of everything. He can't see where his house is. And he sees the falcons moving on top. Poor parrot, if and if he flaps his whole life, that falcon will just come slowly and grab him and say, no more, Mr. Parrot. That's that. Don't be a parrot. But sometimes the falcon looks. So this falcon flew away from the master, from the king. And he landed at the house of a very old woman. So we explain Juma time that old woman is what we call dunya. She doesn't really look nice, but she dresses nice. Hazrat Hakim Sahib mentioned to us that one incident. He said that one murid came to the Khanka. He said, Hazrat, this is the final. Toba, Toba. So he said, what happened? He said, I was behind her in the car and I got the shock. That whenever I see an auntie in Parda, I must make one, two signs. He says, the cars were next to each other and I looked. And you get these boys, like how woman... One woman can pick up another woman, even if both are in Parda. How they do it, I still can't understand. I show you. So something, it's a unique thing that they pick it up. And boys, they can also pick up girls. Because when my one friend fell in love and he became like the Romeo and it was a long story and it spoiled his studies. So when he was leaving the madrasa, I told him, just tell me like how you met her. Because you're going now. I would like to know how you meet them. At that time there was no chats and whatsapp and nowadays you meet them anywhere. That time it was harder. You actually had that old phone where you ask SMS. So I said, how did you meet her? Because she's in Parda. He said, no, we were at the same resort. So I walked past her. And then, so I said, okay, I understood that they were at a resort. But what if she was an old appa? Like how you knew she's the one like to say, give me your phone number. Just like that. And the next day she wrote a number and she gave it to him as he walked past. Because the parents were also there. How did he take the chance to walk past a woman? It could have been that girl's mother. How did he know that just walk past and say, give me your number. He said, I saw her toes. Here, <laughs> Masters <laughs> in the toys. How they do it? <laughs> so we, you know, let's go back to the falcon. <laughs> that old woman is this woman of this world. She wears a nice kurta, burka, jubba, but she is not beautiful. She is not beautiful at all. But the falcon landed there, and she is dunya. So she saw the falcon and you said, you poor bird. Because the only thing she knows, she doesn't know falcons. Dunya doesn't know the akhirat. Dunya doesn't know the arsh of Allah. Dunya doesn't know what it means to be Jannah. Dunya only knows till this part and you can say the building is a skyscraper. That's the highest that dunya has gone. Beyond that high building, it hasn't touched anything else. When they say you will give you the entertainment of the worlds, the answer is no, you'll only give us the entertainment of this world. There's worlds coming, worlds. They haven't reached past that last building. So dunya only knows parrots and budges. So when she saw the falcon, she said, you poor bird. And that is what the dunya says to the people of Iman and sometimes we fall for it. Sometimes we become shy of our own Iman. Just because the people around us say, Hey, I feel sorry for you, man. You have to keep this beard. Can't you just cut it off nicely? Look how nice I look. Clean. You say, look at my jeans. Sometimes it's tight, tight, tight. And sometimes it's loose, loose, loose. Sometimes it's falling off completely. 
But he's got, he's thrilled with his jeans, baggy jeans, he calls it, or tight jeans. He's thrilled and then he tells us, I feel so sorry for you. Look at your dress. We walked in one place with the skurta. So young girls came past. Young girls. And they started laughing and said, Daddy, Daddy, look at them in dresses. Because for them, this is the dress, like this is in a skirt. But she can't say, Mommy, Mommy, where's your dress? Mommy's dress came out. Everything came out. That's why she found the dress somewhere else. So we don't get shy. But he got shy. So the auntie said, you poor falcon. Look at your old dirty wings. He said, has no one ever looked after you? So she said, let me trim your wings. She wants to make it like the budgie or the parrot. After today, that falcon can't fly. Sometimes that person says, I don't know why I don't have that tawfiq just to do good. Maybe someone is clipping our wings. And we're allowing him to clip the wings. When I go to the man and I say, cow, I say, whatever is the new style made in England, do it on my head. Whatever the style is. Whatever the style. After my wings are clipped according to how he wanted to clip it, then I come back in the masjid and I say, Allahu Akbar. I just don't want to be in the masjid. Why? Because I can't fly anymore. Because I had somebody clipping which wasn't supposed to clip. I said, one day I'll keep my shari beard. But now I'm still young, let me enjoy. As long as the beard doesn't come right, you're not going to fly in the sky. You will enjoy the skies and closeness to the arsh of Allah when your body of the falcon is a falcon. So she clapped that wings. And then she said, what is your beak? How will you ever eat what my birds eat? So the budgie and the parrot also got a sharp beak. But their beak is made for pecking. Whereas the falcon's beak is made for tearing. So she had to file it. And now he got the beak of the parrot. Now when she gives meat for him, he's a meat eater in the end of the day. He can't eat that seeds. He ate it one time, he's already stomach feeling funny. But when he's trying to eat meat which he was made for, he hasn't got the beak anymore. So that man says, I'm trying to read Quran. I just don't get the feeling. He say, maybe someone has clipped your beak. And you allowed it to happen. When the father says, I'll send my child to study, daughter or son, don't tell me how they must go, what they must do. My son told me, daddy, trust me. I said, I trust you. Daughter said, daddy, can't you trust me? Father said, I trust you. And then the father said, and be good. Meaning, have your wings clipped, have your beak filed, have your lovely claws nail clipped. Because she looked at that, she said, no one cut your fingernails. But that was the terror. So the father said, daughter, son, change your entire form and then fly like the falcon. That's what the father wanted. And then later on when the poor girl doesn't fly, then the father comes running to us and he said, I'm sure you got some taoise she can read. That she became disobedient. She fell in love with that white boy or that Hindu boy. And now she wants to marry no matter what. So she says, Moana, just tell her it's haram. But her heart has become such that she hasn't got the ability to accept because she's very far from the arsh of Allah. So no matter how many times I'll tell her haram, 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 She's the parrot who's meant to stay on the ground. When you're going to clip your form, you're not going to fly. So the king goes wild. He cries. He makes an announcement in the kingdom, where is my falcon? And then he sends everyone, search for my falcon. And whoever will find my falcon, bring it back. So Allah made like an announcement. He sent the anbiya, he sent the vicegerents of the anbiya. He sent the ulama, he sent the sulaha. He sent the tabligh jamaat, go and look in that house if my falcon is there. Look in that house, look in that house. House to house looking, where is that falcon? And the king even says, I'll give you what a prize if you can find my falcon. That is why the greatest prize that is given by Allah 
is the price for the one who brings back the lost servant of Allah. That price itself shows love. When the alim was told, your place is under the level of the anbiya, it wasn't that I love you so much. It is I love my sinful servant so much that if you find him and bring him back to me, I'll put you under the anbiya. That's when the king announces, go and find my falcon. Where you will ever find this love? Where our master is saying, go and find my falcon. But they find the falcon too late. So they still bring it to the king. But now when the king looks at it, he says, what happened to your wing? Your beak? Your claw? And when the falcon feels shy and he tries to fly, he can't fly. So the king, which had the highest level of love for the falcon, and offered the highest price to bring it back, suddenly his heart just turns. And he says to his minister, take it out. Take it out. And he says, take it around in the towns. Pull it by a chain and make an announcement. This is the punishment for the one who throws himself by the one who doesn't know his value. This is the punishment for the one who throws himself where he doesn't belong. And that falcon is now finished. But that's where I ended Juma time. What I needed to now add was that's a king with his falcon. But when it comes to Allah, the whole story turns now. When it comes to Allah, Allah says, go and find my falcon. That falcon landed by that old witch. She was feeding it that seeds. It could not eat. So day by day it starts getting weaker. And that's what happens to me and you. Day by day our iman does get weaker. And we even start feeling it. I remember last year I used to read my salah. Say, I don't know what happened along the way. As that falcon, he can't eat meat because he got no claw. He got no beak. He can't bite. So his Quran is still by him, but he can't read it. And he sees the tasbih there, but when he holds it, he can't touch it. And he wants to go back to the master, but he can't. He's also in chains. And day by day, he starts getting weaker. And the falcon starts seeing death coming in front. If the friends of the king, if the soldiers of the country can find that falcon before he dies, even if he's on his deathbed, all they need to is to find him. And all he needs to is whenever he got strength is to make a sound. The sound of a falcon. Because as they're going around outside, they don't know where he is. But when that falcon sound is made, they got other falcons with them. You will understand a falcon. That the one falcon is in the sky, hi, he's the, she's the female, and this one is the male. So the male will also make his sound. No one will hear the sound, but that falcon will hear it. That this one is calling me to come back. Let's have fun. So to find the falcon, they'll take another falcon. Going house to house, that falcon is listening. That falcon, even if it is one kilometer in the sky, if this one which is almost dead just says its sound, those falcons will come flying down at the speed of 400 kilometers per hour. They will land outside. Soldiers will come running. They'll bang open the door. That old woman who was the witch, she'll pull back immediately. Who will fight with the soldiers of the king? The falcon will be pulled. The chain means nothing. Day and day it will be cut. The falcon will be taken, put in an ICU immediately. Because by the king is everything. The king of kings. Falcon put in ICU. This world's king can't do it. When he sees that falcon, he says, What happened to your wing? 
He says, get rid of this falcon. Get me another falcon. When it comes to an Allah with these falcons, Allah says, find that falcon. No matter what, go and bring him back home. When he comes, he has no wing. When he makes his call, that call is, Allah, I'm sorry. That call is, Allah, I am sorry. It is heard at the arsh of Allah. There is no need for that one kilometer falcon to come at the speed of 400 kilometers power. Even the angel Jibreel will come flying down. From the arsh of Allah, the angels will come flying. Everyone will be making Amin. That angry witch dunya will pull back. One, Allah, I am sorry. One. The door will be opened. The chain will be cut. But there is no wing. Almighty Allah is the creator of all falcons. Almighty Allah's one nazar will fall and the wing will start growing again. One nazar will fall, glance, and that beak will become a unique beak. One nazar will fall and the claw will come out. And when the falcon looks at his master, Allah, and he wants to say, I'm sorry. Even before he says sorry, Almighty Allah says, don't even say sorry, it's all forgotten. Just stay close to me in the future. Don't go. If the world could find a king like that, wow, what a king, that he could forgive his falcon. But even if the world could find a king like that, the king will say to the falcon, but this is your last chance. You do it again and I will not come looking for you. We have been given that Allah who then says to the falcon, and this is not your last chance. Oh my falcon, wherever you go, wherever you fall, whoever cuts you, whoever trims you, whoever grabs you, whenever it is, wherever you are, on whichever night, whichever place, whatever time, I only need you to make one call and I'll bring you back home. And as long as you carry on calling, I will carry on bringing. Even if you disobey me a thousand times in a single day, you will still be my falcon. This is the meaning of that verse. إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةِ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهِ That Allah says, Tawbah, the acceptance of Tawbah, I have made it compulsory upon myself. For every servant of mine who makes the mistake in ignorance, because it was ignorance that took us away. But as soon as he said, Where am I? ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ very shortly after he says, I'm sorry. The meaning of shortly after means as long as you're not dead. Our master is saying, my falcon, are you ready to come home? I'll make you fly again, fly. Tonight is a night that we all say, I want to come home. You only need one call which I won't share. And perhaps your wife won't share. And perhaps your own ear won't share. But if the one falcon can hear this falcon, then it comes, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ ibadi. When my servant asks you, that how do I call my Allah? Because I'm not known in the heavens, I have never called. Then say, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب Say to my servant, that I am not one kilometer, or one hundred kilometers, or I am not waiting at my arsh for his call. I am closer to him than his own jugular vein. That you were looking is my call going up. Your call was heard before it even came out. Closer to you than your jugular vein. Just when the thought comes to say, Allah, I am sorry. Allah already said, well done. For ulaika yatubu Allah. He said, Allah got you again. May Allah Tawarukala make us saw in the skies. May Allah Tawarukala make we don't look for a twenty fifth and a twenty seventh 
and a 29th, even if I fall and I make an error, the worst and the filthiest of errors, and I landed up in that position that after I fulfill my desire, then I just said, what did I do? Then I stand up and I'm going to the bathroom to wash the dirt. Even in that filthy state, if that individual says, Allah, sorry. Even if he dies in that club, even if they find him in the toilet, and everyone will say where he died, but because he said that, sorry, no one in the world will know that he also flew like a falcon just before he dies. Don't ever delay that I'll go to the masjid and say sorry. Because if death comes, then that falcon will not make it to his master. Immediately after the evil, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ if you do an evil, day and day do the good, tamuhuha, your good will wipe that whole evil away. Don't wait to get out. Day and day said, what did I do? You left the club, you were in the car, as you pressed on that accelerator, let the tear come down your eye. Even if there's an accident on the road back home, the world will say, you know where he was coming from and he died. Allah will say, he died as a martyr. Because that one sentence, one Allah, don't ever let a second go that the falcon doesn't ask, I want to become the falcon. Oh my servant, even if a thousand times in the day you go back, as long as you call me, you will still be mine. أَذْنَبَ عَبْدِي ذَنْبًا My servant has heard. The king said, where's that rubbish gone again? Almighty Allah said, my servant has heard. وَعَلِمَ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًا The king said, does he think he can carry on coming back to me? Who he thinks I am? Almighty Allah says, and my servant knows he got a rub. Only love. فَاسْتَغْفَرَ My servant said, sorry. Allah said, فَغَفَرْتُ No problem. Then the hadith carries on immediately. فَأَذْنَبَ عَبْدِي ذَنْبًا Again the falcon is gone. Again the king of kings said, my servant made a mistake. The angels will be saying, I want to kill him. The king of kings said, my servant, that word abdi is used for the one who flew away. The king said, the rubbish is gone again. The master said, my servant made a mistake. فَعَلِمَ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًّا But he still knows he got a rub. فَاسْتَغْفَرَ He said, sorry. فَغَفَرْتُ And then the third part, oh my servant, I will continue doing as long as you continue asking. وَلَا أُبَالِ And to me it will be nothing. May Allah make us that we are the falcon who becomes the falcon and we never cut off. We are the falcon that never runs. In this world we stay close to our master. And in that world, in the Maliki Muqtadir, we perch as a falcon next to our master.